Hi, good afternoon, folks. This is Dr. Mike. I had, I'm sorry that I'm going to need to be away from meeting today. Uh, I actually was going to plan to pay, give you an older tape that I had from this session, and I thought I'd just take the time to to make a new version and to spend a little time talking to you about uh, bioethics and some of the more current things. Uh, this field moves so quickly that, you know, many of the things that I would have talked about on the other tape are probably uh, outdated, and so I want to just kind of give you a fresh look at uh, the ethical side of, of many of the things that we're facing today. In the field of bioengineering, bioethics, there's lots of things that we talked about yesterday. Uh, we looked at the uh, animal uh, ethics and the particularly in cloning, uh, the cloning of animals, which we have done with Dolly the sheep, and uh, we haven't done a, a human being yet. We We had quite a good discussion based on uh, what what that would mean, what that would look like, and how that would do the, uh, work with humans, and so that's just one one of a very small number of of things that we have to talk about. So today, I want to spend our time talking about the uh, uh, bioengineering, bioethics things that are now currently uh, upon us, and and we're talking about. So I'm going to open a uh, my slides here so that we can kind of direct our thoughts. And we'll have a few things. And I think you'll want to read this chapter. I do think you will want to uh, particularly listen to the TED Talks because they are uh, quite uh, pertinent in showing some of the things that are going on that in the in the field. So biotechnology then would be the manipulation of biological systems and organisms through some kind of technological means. Uh, we live in a day of technology. It is overrunning our lives. And so it's not unusual that uh, we would see it applied to things that uh, might seem a little strange or out of the ordinary. Right now, the the uh, artificial intelligence is running amok and uh, creating havoc. We don't quite know where that's going to settle, how that's going to end up. But it's going to be in all, all aspects of our lives, from manufacturing to healthcare to engineering, everything even with the diagnoses of patients. So uh, you can look for that in the next 10 years to be kind of a runaway train. Bioengineering, on the other hand, is the use of biological science to design machines and to alter biological systems. We are dependent upon so many things from uh, kidney dialysis, one of the best examples of that, uh, uh, to make our bodies work as a bridge therapy, at least until we get a kidney transplant or a heart transplant. I remember very well the first heart transplant that was done in 1976 by Dr. Christian Bernard, who did it of all places in South Africa. Uh, within 10 years, heart transplants were very common. I remember the second stage of that was a artificial heart that Barney Clark got in Utah, and uh, it made this huge noise. I don't know how you would ever have slept with it, uh, but he ended up having a number of strokes and heart attacks and died after six weeks. And we thought, well, that's terrible. But today we have artificial hearts that are connected to people while they're waiting for a heart transplant that prolongs their life. So there's good, there's bad to everything. There's always a downside to technology, uh, but there, there's also many, many good things. Uh, it can be used in therapy where we intervene to restore normal function to an organism that is suffering from a impairment due to a disease or an injury or for an enhancement that you have the result of a technology that provides better than normal function uh, and you know people with pacemakers that is an enhancement function makes your heart beat better and stronger. The current issues today would uh, you hear a great deal about athletic cognitive enhancement steroids uh, Ritalin Adderall for people with ADHD uh, stem cell research where they take the unstamped unmarked cells from the afterbirth of a childbirth and and try to find ways to turn them on to produce uh, healthy cells healthy organs uh, for transplant or whatever we talked a great deal about cloning already there are two kinds of cloning there's therapeutic cloning uh, to improve function uh, which would be cloning like livers or hearts uh, from your own stem cells so that you would not have a, a problem with the rejection medication. And then of course, reproductive cloning where you are uh, creating an entirely new force, new entity. Um, so we talk about in this area, genetic engineering, genetic screening, 
Uh, eugenics is, has been a major source of discussion since about the 1920s. Uh, you would probably know of Adolf Hitler trying to produce a master race of Jews using eugenics. Uh, what you don't know is that he got that from the United States. We weren't trying to produce a master race, but we were trying to produce uh, children without birth defects. And he took it, of course, to a new level. Well, that's moral or immoral is the question. Is it right to tamper with life? Uh, we get that same kind of argument when we discuss uh, uh, abortion and euthanasia and that kind of thing. The Human Genome Project has suddenly made this put this on the market. Uh, we have now mapped the entire human genome. We know what every gene is for. And uh, we actually use that in plants and animals. It wouldn't be unusual today for you to go to a grocery store and find genetically modified plants or animal products. That, that stamp that's on is like HGMO or non-HGMO means that you're following uh, the writings of, of business, uh, you know, business, some scientists that, that invented this. You know, so you're, you're following along um, that line. The Human Genome Project uh, has taught us many, many things about uh, the human body. For one thing, it, it confirmed the fact that Native Americans were actually Euro-Asians and that somehow they had come across the Bering Strait or across the ocean and inhabited the, the Americas. One of the other interesting things about the human genome is the uh, uh, there's a certain group of HIV people who, who are immune to HIV. And so what they found in looking at their genome was that they had had an ancestor who survived the Black Death way back when, and they carried immunity for, for AIDS from the immunity to the Black Death. So they're doing a whole line of studies now to see if they can take their antibodies and make a vaccine that would stop uh, stop HIV, which would be quite interesting to see. Uh, but you, do, you get a lot of uh, modified, you see modified plants and animals in the grocery store. The non-HGMO means it is not genetically modified. I went to school at Clemson, their big agricultural college. They have hundreds of pat patents for uh, seeds and things that they modified to make sure they grow more, more food. Uh, one of the interesting things about that is corn. They have a corn patent that they sell the seed and Hispanic people will not buy it because the corn does not taste like corn, that they remember it, for tortillas. And so it's been a pretty big struggle to sell some of the products that have come out of this. But just know that the HGMO, non-HGMO stuff is a part of this idea of the changing the genetics. There are a lot of legal and uh, ethical issues involved. Of course, uh, the idea of playing God, that you're, you're creating life is a, is a big deal. It's been around ever since in vitro fertilization uh, where people, uh, you know, found fault with people trying to have babies to a test tube or a petri dish. Uh, athletic and cognitive enhancement is a big discussion today, especially with transgenderism. Uh, and so there's a lot of people talking about that and trying to get laws passed. So you'll see some of this in the paper as you uh, as you work through it. Stem cell research, I've already mentioned, the moral status of the embryo is uh, at, at point here. At what point does an embryo become a living human being or a citizen or a person that's able to make decisions? So it might be something you want to look into and think about pretty pretty clearly. Um, so genetic engineering, genetic screening is another technology that we, we use to check an unborn baby to see if uh, that baby is maybe has some genetic abnormalities that will, will, will compromise its ability to live and to be strong and do what uh, what it needs to be done. So in the rest of the study today, you're going to look at some philosophers, read the chapter, but look at some different philosophers and their views about life and uh, see where you come in on that. Uh, are you for or against innovations of these genetic things uh, and uh, kind of come down where were you feel like you can you can do that with uh, impunity. So uh, th these are some important points that you, as we wrap up the, the study of ethics, I appreciate your efforts in the last three weeks, but as we, as we wrap things up, I would like for you to go back to your original document that you wrote in week one and think about your ethics statement. Are there things you would like to add to that? Or maybe there's some things that you'd like to take away from it? 
but it will be very beneficial to you to do that. Most of our students probably don't change their ethics, but they certainly change their approach to dealing with other people because they learn that other people, you know, have feelings and have desires and things that they want to see uh, as well. So I appreciate your time and your effort during the course, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future course. Thank you. God bless.